But when I'm inside my own head, that's when I, I have the greatest probability of failing. Do you have an example of a time that you failed? That we, uh, in hindsight? I, I think my biggest failure is in, in hindsight, um, where when I didn't realize um, how important this person was just as a person. That early on in my career was more, I looked at more like people like subjects who I had to change, somebody, something I had to fix, um, as opposed to thinking of them as people who I can give additional skills to. So as a total corrective model, as opposed to just saying, tell me who you are and then we'll figure out where we need to go. And, and I, I have to emphasize that, that I, I work with adolescents and adults. So by the time I meet somebody, they're pretty much established as who they are as a person. I'm not talking about a three-year-old, I'm not talking about a five-year-old, I'm talking about a 27-year-old. So if I meet a 27-year-old and he's aggressive and he's nonverbal, I have to figure out who this person is and what are those contingencies in his life, not the ones that I think about, because in his world, it's completely rational what he's doing. It makes 100% sense to him. He's looking at me like I'm the special needs learner because I can't figure it out. He's like, I am telling you this. I'm explaining to you every day when I hit you, I'm explaining to you why I'm hitting you and I can't figure it out. Like, that's the failure is when I often get stuck inside my head. Uh, I'll give you, after I got my doctorate, I was back at um, the Douglas Developmental Disability Center. And I had a program for individuals, adolescents, with a long-standing history of severe challenging behavior. You had to be kicked out of three other schools before we would take you in. So these were really tough kids. Classic autism, not like what we used to call Asperger's syndrome. And I had one student made up name, John, who we had figured out about 80% of his aggression, had reduced it by about 80%, but I couldn't figure out that last 20%. And I was talking to Sandy Harris, who founded the Douglas Developmental Disability Center, one of my personal professional heroes. Um, and we're looking at graphs and I said, Sandy, I can't figure it out. And she said, don't worry, Peter, you'll figure it out. John's a very patient teacher if you just listen to him. And she was right. Like I had to get outside of my head and just take a step back and think from his point of view. And then by doing that, I could collect the right data, which would tell me what I was supposed to be doing. So once I let him be the teacher, very right Yoda-like, all of a sudden I could figure it out. But when I'm inside my own head, that's when I, I have the greatest probability of failing. Um, you know, Skinner said the rat is always right. Like, my students are always right. My adult clients are always right. Like, if I change a behavior, and as soon as I stop the intervention, the behavior comes right back, that's telling me something. That I really wasn't very good at what I did. And it's a lesson that I think we all need to take more directly to heart than we do. Um, it's not about my life. You know, I tell my staff this all the time, like probably about 10 years ago, I finally let go of my ego. Now it's, it's very psychoanalytic, not psychoanalytic, but psychodynamic, you let go of my ego, yada, yada. But I realized like, it's nice to come to these, these conferences and it's great to do like these sort of talks and like, but it's not about me. Like, I only get to be right if my student tells me I'm right. Like, they're the boss, you know? And if it didn't work, then I wasn't right. Like, like that's the, it's so it's never, I came up with the right contingency or the right intervention or the right, it's like he directed me to the right contingency and he shaped my behavior so that I finally got it right. And once I could, do that, it became so much easier to actually just sort of follow that right path and not get stuck in, well, I have to go back into the research and, and look at reflexive condition motivating operations in terms of the abolishing act of like, no, like, I just wanna know where you need to go.
and how do I get you there? This channel is entirely supported by people like you. If you have the means to, please check out the link to Patreon and maybe consider helping bring more of this to the world. That's your Daily Beat.